Hi guys, Brian the Scare Lion back with another video. And well, for those of you who don't know, uh, last night was WWE's annual Money in the Bank pay per view. Uh, a lot happened, really. Some, some good. Some very, 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 very bad. It's kind of hard to evaluate on a whole how the night was. If I had to, I'd probably say really bad. But we'll get into why. Uh, Warning, there will probably be some very, 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 very strong language towards the end of this video. But aye, with all that being said, here's what happened at Money in the Bank 2019. So the first match that we got was on the kickoff show, and it was Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, sorry, Rowan, versus The Usos uh, in a non-title match. So the uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championships were not on the line. Um, this match... It wasn't a bad match, like, it, it was a match, it was like a, mm, best way to describe it, it was an alright match, really. But, the worst part about it was the outcome, I mean, it should have been Daniel Bryan and uh, Rowan actually winning this, because they're the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, you want them to look good going forward, instead, you, ha having the Usos win does nothing for either team. This match really didn't do anything. So it was pointless. It's the be best way I could put it. It was just a pointless match. Um, it ended up finishing with the Usos hitting the double splash onto Daniel Bryan and then picking up the victory. Like I say, bog standard match. It was g decent action, but pointless. Then we move on to the main show and we got the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, this match. There was a lot of action. There was a lot of action going on. A lot of it felt clunky at times. There was a lot of spots in it where I was just like, right, it could have been done better. It could have been done a lot better. But to say that, there was a lot of action in the match which kept it, kept you like invested. The spot of the night, I think I've got to give it to fucking Ember Moon. That eclipse from the ladder which was set up on the outside of the ring, into the ring. It was fucking brilliant. Towards the end of the match, we saw Sonya Deville coming in to help uh, Mandy Rose climb the ladder. At this point, I'm screaming at the TV, please don't let this happen. Do not let fucking Mandy Rose win this. Sonya Deville literally carried her up the ladder. It was a pretty fun moment. Uh, but then Bailey comes in, just stares at uh, Mandy and then fucking takes them barefoot and claims the briefcase. Bailey won the briefcase. It was a great way to go. Uh, for me, I feel like it would have been better if it was somebody like uh, Ember Moon or Nikki Cross. But having Bailey win it actually does something for Bailey. So thank fuck they've done that and not just push Bailey into obscurity. But uh, overall, it was a decent match, just very clunky. So next we move on to the United States Championship match. This was between Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio. Uh, this had a screwy finish. Samoa Joe's arm nowhere near the mat. And yeah, Rey Mysterio still picked up the victory. Uh, I'm kind of tired of WWE pulling these... Like, these screwy finishes with the shoulder actually being off the mat. They do it too often. Uh, it does mean Rey Mysterio is the new United States Champion. I think we all saw that coming. But, oh, uh, why do we have to have this finish over and over and over and over again? It just felt bad. Really, really bad. After the match, we did see uh, Dominic having to watch Rey Mysterio get absolutely fucking decimated by Samoa Joe. Uh, during the match, I think some more Joe's nose got broke, like uh, it was just bleeding constantly. Um, but aye, Dominic stunning there, looking on as Rey Mysterio is getting swatted, saying no, that's enough Joe, and things like that. Uh, hopefully, this is pushing towards something with Dominic. I, I really do hope something happens with Dominic. But aye, th th this match... It could have been a lot better, could have been a lot better. Now we move on to The Miz versus Shane McMahon inside a steel cage. Very confusing one here. Very, very confusing one. Um, the action itself was great. 
I feel like both men actually put on a great show in this match. Uh, the part that really upsets me was the Miz had Shane pinned. Uh, Shane's foot got to the bottom rope, yet it was still broke up. Like, even. Even though, the, like, the rope break, uh, it's not a rule inside the cage. The ropes can't break anything. But yet, the ref still broke it up. I guess the pushing for a referee got paid off angle. Like they did with the whole Brad Maddox thing and all that in the past. Again, there's no storyline that I'm interested in. I don't give a crap about paying off refs. The best spot in this was actually... The Miz flipping Shane back into the cage and Shane just hitting the mat just full force. It was a great spot. Um, the Miz is always fucking incredible. Let's just be honest. The Miz is always incredible. And Shane, love him or hate him, he's always willing to <laughs> fucking take these massive bumps. Uh, aye, fair enough. He doesn't have to wrestle as much as other wrestlers, which kind of means he's able to damn it. So I, I think it's good when we get to see those big spots. Shane ended up actually picking up this victory after he climbed over the cage to escape. Uh, the Miz grabbed him, grabbed him by the shirt, and Shane fell out of the shirt actually picking up the victory. Uh, okay, I guess. I mean, can we can we get at least one more match where we actually see the Miz picking up the victory against Shane? I feel like it's deserved... After the way the story's gone, The Miz actually getting that feel-good moment of actually beating Shane. We then got the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match between Tony Nese and Arya Davari. Uh, unfortunately, and I hate to say this, this was the worst match for WWE to go. Do you know what? Let's have the Cruiserweights on the main card for a pay-per-view. Because... It felt a lot slower than you, the usual 205 Live uh, matches, uh, and it was actually pretty boring. I mean, it's nothing to take away from both superstars. They've both got incredible moves in their arsenal, and they can both look absolutely amazing. But, I this match itself was just pure boring, and I hate to say it. I really do. The 205 Live guys always put on a great show but mm. but this match actually ended with Tony Nese hitting the running Nice and picking up the victory against Arya Davari to retain the Cruiserweight Championship not a bad match in terms of actual wrestling it was just very boring we then got the Raw Women's Championship match the first of two matches for Becky Lynch and this one was against Lacey Evans uh, the match itself was actually pretty good uh, I didn't I didn't know what to expect for this because uh, I've never really been a fan of Lacey Evans. Um, I always thought she could have used a lot more work. But I guess put her up against Becky Lynch and you could pull out a really good match. Lacey Evans actually looked really good in this match as well as Becky Lynch. But we all know that Becky Lynch was going to look brilliant. She is literally one of the best female wrestlers. So... Aye, we went forward with a really good match. Lacey Evans choosing to target that left arm of Becky Lynch was a really good shout. We ended up having Becky Lynch picking up the victory uh, after getting Lacey Evans into the disarmor and Lacey Evans having the tap. A uh, really good way to go and it segued into the next match. So the next match that we actually got from here was Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair came out and was all like smiley and cocky and everything and Becky was like fuck it we're gonna have this match uh, the match got underway uh, bog standard bog standard um, we had Becky still taking it to Charlotte I, I really like that that they had didn't have it so Charlotte just came out just flat out destroyed fucking Sh uh, Becky Lynch because that's the way I think most people thought it was going to go. She'd have her first match and then whoever was second would just come out and basically pick, like, pick off the carcass. But no, they actually put on a match against each other. Becky Lynch looked great. Charlotte looked great as well. Um, and it ended up coming down a an interference by Lacey Evans actually hitting the woman's right onto Becky Lynch. Charlotte Flair comes in. We see a big vote and uh, it's one, two, three, and it's done. Charlotte Flair is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. So, 
at that point I was like, oh god, why? Why do we have to have Charlotte as champion again? Can we not see her do something that isn't involving the championship? Uh, after the match, we saw Charlotte and Lacey Evans actually beating down Becky Lynch, just destroying her, and then Bailey's music hits. Bailey comes running up to help out Becky, uh, and we end up getting a cash in. Bailey cashes in on Charlotte, and well, uh, there's not really much to say. It wasn't it wasn't a match, was it? No, it wasn't a match. There's not really much I can say apart from it. Bailey picked up the victory. Bailey is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. Hopefully, they can build some really great storylines out of this. Um, maybe even push forward with Bailey versus Charlotte. Build a big storyline out of that. I mean, I don't want to see Charlotte in the title picture, but if you're going to have her in the title picture, ah, you could build a pretty decent uh, storyline between her and Bailey. And then we move on to another one that. It's going to be hard to even talk about, really. Uh, it's Roman Reigns versus Elias. Now, this match wasn't a match. <laughs> uh, basically, before the match, Elias hit Roman Reigns with his guitar, then came out to the ring, picked up an electric guitar, uh, started chatting shit about the town, started chatting shit about Roman, and then was walking away, and Roman came out, hit a spear and won the match. So from here we move on to probably the best match of the night. As in terms of the whole match itself, we'll get on to why I'm saying it like that. Um, but this was Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles for the Universal Championship. Both men looked fucking brilliant during this. Uh, we saw false finish after false finish. We saw massive moves hit. We saw Seth Rollins kicking out after receiving a fucking uh, Styles Clash. That was brilliant. Like, both of these men are so fucking amazing. And it, it's obvious why they are, like, top of the card, no matter what brand they're on. They've both got the ability to put on fucking classics. Obviously, Seth Rollins did pick up the victory. I think it would have been a bit silly if they had him lose this championship at this point. Like, he's only just won it. He's only just beat Brock Lesnar for it. So, I think it would have been a really, really, really bad move to have him lose the championship already. Uh, he, he won it by hitting the curb stomp on AJ Styles. Uh, and after the match, both men shook, shook hands. I feel like it probably would have been nicer to see a uh, heel turn from AJ Styles. Maybe even bringing in the club. I, uh, but, all in all, it was still a really good match with a really good ending. So I, I can't afford it on that. Then we got a segment involving Lucha House Party coming out saying stuff. Then Lars Sullivan of all people came out and destroyed Lucha House Party at the end. So the next match that we move on to is the WWE Championship match. This is between Kofi Kingston and Kevin Owens. Again, both men put on a fucking great match. We saw some brutality for Kevin Owens who just unleashed on Kofi. We saw Kofi hitting some amazing spots, some amazing high flying spots. Uh, we had a weird moment where, like, Kevin took off Kofi's shoes. The match itself was absolutely incredible. Uh, we saw we, we saw Kevin actually getting quite a few Boston crabs and on Kofi Kingston, which I feel like it's really good. But it was able to mix things up a bit. Uh, we saw Kofi Kingston kicking out after receiving a stunner, which again is another incredible moment. I absolutely love when we get those moments where a massive move is hit and we think, you know what, this could be it, it could be done, and then... But, um, I, again, it comes down to, I don't think we thought Kev, uh, Kofi Kingston was actually going to lose this. It's a bit early, he's only just won the championship. Uh, we've got to get a few more matches out of him. I feel like it's got it's got to be a few more. If it's just that one, then mm, I think I'll be upset. I want to see a few title defenses after Kofi. Then we move on to the final match, the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, earlier on in the night, Sami Zayn had been attacked and taken out of the match, so we were going forward with what we thought was a seven man money in the bank ladder match. Uh, 
Let's talk about the good stuff. Let's talk about the good stuff. So a lot of fucking amazing spots in this. We start off with fucking Randy Orton playing the sneaky little bastard that he is, just waiting and picking his spots, and then he takes out he takes out Ali, then he takes out Finn, then he takes out Ricochet. Like it was a great start to it for Randy Orton. Oddest thing in this, uh, I actually enjoyed a lot that was going on with Baron Corbin. For such a long time now with Baron Corbin, I felt like everything was gone a bit stale and I just couldn't stand what was actually happening. But no, Baron actually put on a great shout during this. Uh, Drew McIntyre looking destructive as ever. Just fucking annihilating every bastard. I love that. It's the best way to play Afi Drew. Just make him look like a fucking absolute animal. It's time to talk about Andrade's biggest spot. Oh, Finn. Right. Basically, a ladder had been set up in the middle of the ring with another ladder set up between the steps of that ladder and the ropes. Oh, Finn Balor ended up receiving a sunset flip powerbomb onto that ladder, which then fell, and Finn Balor bounced off here. Andrade hitting this fucking amazing powerbomb. And Finn Balor must have bounced like fucking 10 feet high, I swear to God. He literally just bounced off of it, hit it again, and then went down. You'd think that'd be it. Finn Balor ended up putting his back through fucking agony. Ali and Ricochet also looking absolutely fucking amazing during this match. Like, these seven men were putting on a fucking incredible show. And I was loving every minute, every minute here. And we finally got down towards the end. Um, Ali was the only man left standing. He was climbing the ladder, almost got the briefcase, and then Brock Lesnar's music hit. Brock fucking Lesnar. Oh. It's an absolute fucking travesty. It's a piss take. Brock Lesnar comes out, fucking uh, chucks uh, Ali after the fucking ladder, and then uh, wins the Money in the Bank briefcase, smiling and laughing throughout it. Literally, that smile was just Vince. I, I bet you that smile was Vince going, ha ha ha, fuck you, all to the fans. It's the worst fucking possible time for WWE to fucking try and pull this shit. AEW is literally kicking off this weekend. We've got double or nothing kicking off this weekend. And the way the hi hype and the buzz has been gone about it, uh, it's going to be WWE versus AEW. They're going to actually fucking rival each other. So this is the worst time for WWE to drop the fucking ball. And what do they do? They give the fucking money in the bank briefcase to Brock fucking Lesnar. You've had low shitty ratings for fucking ages. And yet you fucking turn against the fans and give them the worst fucking outcome you could give. I would have preferred Baron Corbin winning that. I would have fucking preferred if James Ellsworth came running down to the ring, fucking gripped the briefcases for himself. But no, Brock, Brock fucking Lesnar. Brock fucking Lesnar. Say goodbye to one of the two championships because as soon as he cashes that in the championship's gone after the fucking screen for ages stupid fucking bastards whoever fucking came up with a stupid bastard concept is a fucking moron i swear to him. i realize i am getting passionate about this but i am sick of brock fucking lesnar he comes in he takes a championship then he disappears for fucking ages fuck you brock fuck you brock honestly the worst part about it is the seven men who were in this match were fucking brilliant. This match was gone amazingly. Uh, yet yeah, Brock Lesnar has to come in and ruin the full fucking thing. If anybody deserved to win this after everything they'd went through in that match, it was Finn Balor. Finn Balor looked fucking incredible. And he looked like he took so much damage. Yet yeah, Brock fucking Lesnar. Brock fucking Lesnar is the money in the bank fucking contract holder. Oh. I'm sorry I had to go that pissed off. It's 
I love wrestling. I absolutely love wrestling, and it fucking breaks me down to my core when I see shit like this going on. Honestly, I can't wait for Saturday. Saturday's going to be a much better fucking day. So, when it comes to punishments, uh, I was the one that actually lost, so it's up to me today, the blackhead, uh, charcoal stuff. But, Thomas has to do chair shots. So, I had a little thought in mind. Thomas. Double or nothing. Double or nothing means for the, uh, for the pay-per-view of Double or Nothing, which is happening on Saturday, the loser of the predictions from that will have to face both the chair shots and the black the black mask charcoal stuff. So I look forward to that. Uh, the predictions will be out later this week. Uh, and But I, I hope you enjoyed this recap, this little review of Money in the Bank. Um... Let me know down below on a scale from 1 to 10 how pissed you are that Brock Lesnar holds the fucking money in the bank contract. Brock fucking Lesnar. Oh. I hope you did like this video and if you did like it, don't forget to butt fuck that like button. Peace.